Welcome to the first Inside Lane broadcast. We're live from uh, Runners World HQ here in Cape Town. We've got uh, Dr. Ross Tucker, a world-renowned sports scientist who's been uh, quoted all over the world for his work across various sports, not just uh, athletics as we're going to be talking today and uh, most of next week during the World Championships, but rugby is obviously a big passion of yours and we've talked about cycling in the past, but your knowledge of uh, sport has been obviously what we're going to be uh, getting Ross involved with over the next uh, couple of weeks. So the intention of Inside Lane is really just to kind of bring you some insight around the World Championships. Uh, as we know, South Africa is going to be well represented uh, with the chance of getting probably the most gold medals we've ever got at World Championship level. And we can talk a bit about our chances of that. But we also want to look at a global perspective on the athletics and particularly the World Athletics Championships. We know there's some interesting studies which uh, Ross will explain a bit later on that are happening internationally. Um, and we're going to be able to give you some insight into things as they happen on the course. We're going to preview each day, so every single morning at 10 o'clock you can tune into Runners World um, on Facebook and we'll be able to also take your questions. So when you're actually uh, following us, send us some questions on Facebook. Hopefully we can answer them. If I can answer them, uh, Ross will almost certainly be able to answer them and if we can't do that, we'll phone somebody. We'll make something up. We'll make something you up. You can correct us and we'll, we'll acknowledge you the day after. <laughs> so that's the plan. Um, but so let's, let's first of all kick off with, with, with the probably the the latest controversy, and that's to do with the, the selection of the South African Athletics team, but not just in that capacity, how teams are selected for events like the World Championships. Yeah. Um, just briefly, the controversy around South Africa in particular, it's, the, the actual, my thinking is that the thinking behind it is correct. If this is a World Championship event, mm -hmm. you need to take the best athletes, but the execution has been fairly poor on the side of Athletics South Africa. Yeah, so I think the thing is, selection controversies are not unique to South Africa. Mm. There's an Ethiopian steeplechaser who's just been banned for two years because he punched his coach. He was so angry that he didn't get selected because they held trials and he'd finished third in the steeplechase trials and didn't go. So they went against their own selection policies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ethiopian woman in the 10,000, they held the trials in one, two, and three. Not one of them got selected. They, ch they chose three other women who didn't even run in the trial. So it happens. Mm. But the South African one... It's just, from start to finish, you can question the process because mm. what, what, what the IWF does is they set standards specifically because it's a world championships and you don't want people running in the same race as Usain Bolt finishing the 100 meters in 13 seconds and he's just packed full. Mm. So they set these minimum entry standards and the assumption is that if an athlete can achieve those standards, then their national federation picks them. ASA, whether you agree with us or not, have decided to create a different entry criteria which is usually but not always more stringent now I don't know how they come up with it I, I know how I would do it and I'm not sure they've done it the same way but but for instance the the IAAF to qualify for the 5,000 because this affects one of our athletes you have to run 1522 women mm -hmm. the athletic South Africa standards 1509 so the problem that's going to create is you're going to get this inevitable clumsy situation where some athletes are bang in the middle yeah. They've achieved the IWF standard, so globally they're recognized as being good enough to go, but Athletic South Africa standard, they're not. And what Athletic South Africa has done, for reasons that still aren't clear or are false, is that they have selected some of those athletes and not others. And so Dominique Scott is one, mm -hmm. who she's the one I'm speaking about, she's run between the IWFs and ASA, she's not going. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are other athletes who are. So in total there are 20 of these athletes and, and 14 of them are sitting at home. Mm. And the rest have been chosen to go and compete. Now, if you're an athlete, you're looking at this and saying, hell oh, man, like, yeah. I did exactly what I'm was required. I'm in the same boat as them, but they're on the plane and I'm, yeah. I'm watching it on the couch. And that's the, 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 I mean, the thinking is potentially correct. I'm very worried to say that, but, it, but in that you want to take athletes that you know are going to represent the country well to be in a semi-final, and because we have mm. gold medalists, maybe that standard is higher. But, you know, people say, well, is it a financial thing? It's not because the idea they pay for the athletes to go, so that's not the issue. Right. What, what, what other reason would ASA be thinking about not taking these athletes? I mean, there is, is there any real reason that you can work out why the local federation would not take the most amount of athletes? There might be some indirect cost down the line, because mm. An athlete who goes to world championships might then be able to motivate for support the year after mm. and the year after that. And so maybe someone's thinking strategically, but I highly doubt it. There seems to be not much of that <laughs> going on. Um, so, so, but the, so the quality thing, that's not unique in the world. Olympic programs live and die by their medal capabilities. Mm. So 
Team GB, for instance, after the 2012 Olympics, they cut the funding entirely for some of the sports. So now we're talking whole sports federations. Basketball in Great Britain was deemed to no longer be a medal prospect. They went from seven million pounds over the next three years to zero mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. And so they call that no compromise in sports. So that, that attitude does exist, but in this instance, there's no need for it because the athletes have hit the targets they're not going to cost anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't even cost the flight. No. So, literally, for the for the ink on a piece of paper of naming those athletes, they could have been in London. Mm. And the biggest damage, really, is that when you select someone who's not a medal hopeful, mm. you know. So, so you look. We got a hundred meter guy, Enrico Branchi, is not going. He he would, if he makes the semis in London, he's done well. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's actually not about him. Mm. It's about the 17 or 18 year old who wants to go to the world championships in 2025 mm. which would be okay maybe 2023 mm. who's, who's looking at Brankies and saying that these administrators are actually playing fast and loose with mm. the rules and, and as an athlete I live and die mm. by, by times milliseconds and millimeters is what I am about and when that objective standard is no longer enough then this sacrifice that I'm making as an athlete mm. suddenly doesn't look like it's worth it anymore yeah. and I'm actually going to say you know what given a choice between a BCom and a mm. track and field career mm. the BCom starts to look a bit more viable than the or basketball starts looking more viable <laughs> yeah or something <laughs> else starts years, to yeah. look more viable yeah. so yeah. so the problem is that the message it sends is wrong mm. if you if you select those athletes you're sending a message that says we are rewarding you for your hard work mm. and we're giving you a springboard you know mm. in 2013 who went to the world champs and didn't make it out of the heats was mm. Wade for Nikak. Mm. By 2015, he's world champion. Mm. By 2016, he's Olympic champion, mm. world record holder. Mm. Mm. So, so had you applied that policy then, he wouldn't have gone in 2013. Now, yeah. he probably still would have made it, mm. but but a lot of others maybe don't. You know, mm. so you're, you're denying people the opportunity that they've earned. Mm. And you are denying the next generation confidence in the system. So yeah. that's that's the reason it's so controversial. The hardest thing, really, is that they literally find out two weeks before the championship well, well, that's, that yeah. they're not going, which I find. Surely right. you want to know, so, you know, maybe three or four months in advance, so you can peak and know if you're in. Yeah. So now you're just minute. now you're just ticking off a list of incompetencies, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. okay. So how do you set your standards? I don't think they set them in an evidence-based, mm. data-driven, or yeah. credible way. Mm. How do you communicate those standards to mm. athletes? Uh, should those standards even exist? And then you get to, now you've made your selection, it's too late. Yeah. You don't communicate that until mm. early enough. Mm. The appeals process is a disaster. Mm. Mm. There's, there's arbitrary decision making. Person mm. A goes, person B doesn't. Mm. They've done the same thing. So yeah. if you're an athlete... Well, I mean, just, just, to, just to move forward with this, I know we can talk about the selection um, of South African athletes probably ad nauseum here. There's been so much written about it in the media in the last couple of days and some fairly inflammatory headlines. We've seen in some of the newspapers. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Just got a question from uh, Brian John Records on, I um, don't know whether it's his name, whether it's his recording company, but he was asking, what is the, where to from here for the ASA board? In other words, is the, should they... Will they be able to turn this around? Do you think they'll look at selection differently? Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's a difficult to answer, but I don't think so. Part of me wants to say, where to from here? London business class and then home. <laughs> like, that's that's what they'll do. And th one of the scenario, if you go down that list, the final one is like complete lack of accountability. Mm. There's no there's no accountability, yeah. so they won't be forced out. The only, the only time I can remember a, a board or an executive turnover in Athletic South Africa was when they completely mangled the Semenya... Mm. Controversy in 2009. Mm. That, that's mm. Mm. that was the one that eventually forced Chueni out, and there was a mm. bit of an overhaul. Mm. They'll just brush this off. Mm. We'll go to we'll go to London as a country, and we'll win. I'd, I'd be surprised if we don't win four four yeah. gold medals. Yeah, and we've never we've never come back with that many medals. Never mind yeah. golds. Plus, maybe okay, so one go, or just two go, let's go through ones. them while we're talking about it. When we, we talked about this yesterday, four gold medals. Like, hang on a minute, I, I've only got two. What, what are the four for you? So your two are. Kester and, uh, and, and Wade, Wade yeah. in the four. Yeah. So I'd add Wade in the two. So we know that because Bolt's not running the two. Even if he was. Even Wade. if he was? Yeah, yeah, Wade. Do you think that's why he's not running the two? That's why he's not running <laughs> <laughs> He's scared of Wade. I think he's... I think I don't, I don't even know if Bolt would get a medal in the two. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I think... We'll yeah. talk about Bolt in the week because the men's hundred is on this weekend. Mm. Mm. So we'll, we'll get to Bolt in detail, I reckon. But Bolt... 
if you think back, 2008, well, that's that's nine years mm -hmm. to be a photographer. This, this this is a guy in the twilight now, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not really a fair race. Yeah. He's at his decline mm -hmm. and waves at the peak. So, mm -hmm. but not, not just not, he's not running mid nine seconds. He's running upper nine seconds. No, nine nine five. He's yeah. never been a slow coming into a major championship spot. Okay. So, uh. so I I think Bolt has taken the. It's, it's not right to call it the path of least resistance, but it's the it's the path of least likelihood of losing. Okay. So, so you think there's reputational damage for him if he loses in that tournament? I mean, is it, I mean, it's difficult to say because we're not him. But <laughs> he'll if you're, feel, if you're he'll the greatest ever, do you want to lose in your final world championship? I mean, he's no, no, he'll feel there is right. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, in tw in ten years from now, no one's going to look back and say Bolt, whose career was defined by his defeat in the twenty seventeen mm. world champs. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They'll look back and they'll say Bolt, who still in 10 years holds the world records yeah. and won this many gold, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so actually, no, mm. Mm. but at the time, you can understand. Mm. The guy wants to mm. end his major careers, quote unquote, undefeated, because he yeah. had a false start and he's had a teammate disqualified for doping. So there's, yeah. a, there's a couple of defeats yeah. there, but... Yeah. All right, so let's... So I would say, I would say Wade wins the 200. I'd be, the only thing there is the fatigue aspect, because you run three races in the four, and then you run three races in the 200. So the, the, the 200 meter final will be sixth uh, final or race. Mm -hmm. And that's that's demanding. And the last time somebody did this at a major event was Michael Johnson in 96 in Atlanta, if I remember. I read something about this the other day. So, yeah. so, yeah. And, and it's been very difficult to do that since because of the schedule, whereas yeah, they actually yeah. changed the schedule this year so that it was possible for Wade to do that, um, which yeah. is a remarkable thing, really. Which tells you what... So, so this is another theme that will come out of London is... These guys, if the people who run athletics, are losing their big draw card mm. after London because yeah. Bolt, Bolt will run maybe one or two more races in the in the Diamond Leagues mm. and then he's done. Mm. So who is going to be the next Usain Bolt? Now, Wade Finnecap is not Bolt character-wise. Mm. Mm. He's not pulling the Bolt pose. What mm. does he call it? To the moon or something? Well, lightning pose. Whatever. The lightning, but whatever. But maybe we need to invent one for him. And he's not dancing <laughs> or... I mean, Wade Van the guy who's collapsing in relief after the 400 title yeah. and going to his family. Yes. Bolt's the guy who's mm. jumping on a Segway or getting run out, whatever. Yeah. Or doing a DJing the party that night. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But they need they need a performer to take over from Bolt. Mm. And I, mm. I think, you saw it in Rio, like Van their guy. Mm. And so they... Mm. Uh, I don't know if I'm loath to say they need him to do the double, but mm. it will help them if he does the mm. double. And I, mm. I think he will. I, he's the second fastest in the world over 200, mm. just behind Makwala. Mm. But Makwala is also doing the 4-2, and I don't think he's he's going to come through as well. So I think mm. Fenneke wins the 200 actually quite comfortably. Okay, would be my guess. All right. And then the, the fourth. You're alive with this, so people will be able to look back and. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So that's three, and then four is. Manyonga in the long jump. Oh, yeah. So Manyonga, even if you take out the altitude jumps, because sprint and, and jumps events are mm. hugely benefited by altitude. Mm. So that's why when you look at our sub 10 second sprinters, mm. most of them come in Pretoria Potch, right? So yeah. it helps. Yeah. And well, Manyonga, the long distance guys are terrible in it. Yeah, 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 they, they, yeah. They, yeah, they don't even bother racing mm. for time. Uh, Manyonga's jumped 860 three or four times this year, mm. including in a couple of diamond leagues. Mm. And he's 25 centimeters net better than the next guy. Mm. So unless he has a really bad day, mm. his last meeting I think was in Stockholm mm. and he he pulled up after the last jump and he was limping a little bit, mm -hmm. hasn't jumped again. Mm. And I must be honest, I haven't seen anything in the news whether he was injured or not. Mm -hmm. But if, if that injury is more serious than has been reported or looked, mm -hmm. then there are question marks. But if the if the injury is fine and he has managed his training well, then the guys, I mean, you're 20 centimeters better. You're going to win a medal, and it should be gold. Mm. Mm. If he doesn't, the next best guy is a South African as well, and yeah. Samai. So, yeah. so you got to think there's a gold medal in the long jump, whether it's Manyongo or Samai. Mm -hmm. And then the final potential is Semenya in the 15, which I think. That women's fifteen hundred is the most interesting event in London. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was one of the top events before she decided to run mm. it. But but the addition of Semenya to that group of four athletes makes the 
race tactically and mm. physiologically and newsworthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's, a, that's a big deal. So because the whole race will change for some of those athletes because they to. know that they, they're going to get out kicked. Has to, which yeah. means that they have to change the way that they would run that normally if she wasn't in the race. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's going to be, and, and that race is first. So Semenya does the 15 and then the 8. Mm. Mm. Which is interesting because if anything's going to compromise the 8, it's the 15. Yeah. If they'd been the other way around, it was an easy mm. decision. And they go through three heats for the 1500? Yeah. Yeah, at least. Yeah. 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 So she has to run six races in 10 days, which is, yeah. which is tough. Especially at that level. Yeah, but it is, it is quite amazing to think that this little country of ours, which, uh, you know, in, in history since we've been back in, in, in the world sport, it, we haven't really performed exceptionally well. In, in the 90s, we had good times with the, with the 400 meter hurdlers and Hezekiel Saping in the 800s and that, that whole yeah, group of bits there. and the Hadzi, we had some really great runs. Yeah, yeah. So it has been good, but it, yeah. it, to, pretend, to think that we might have two double gold medalists, not to put mm. pressure on these guys, but that could happen, yeah. and maybe five golds will put us right in the top 10 countries probably in the world. Yeah, yeah. That's on the medal table? Yeah, by gold medals for sure. Yeah. And that's uh, what gold is what counts, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. You want to be winning. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So four I would say four well certain. Mm. And then it never certain. Mm. But we we've got a couple of athletes there who you would if you were desperate you'd mortgage your house on. Yeah, yeah. Um I put them in a among the five most certain medals in the championships yeah. actually, for Nikak and Semenya in the eight. Yeah. And then Manyonga and Funikak and the two are very strong possibilities, I think. And then Semenya is a maybe a medal in a fifteen. It, yeah, we, we'll talk about the we we'll talk about specific events on the morning of and as we go through the heats. Mm. So I don't want to so preempt it too much now. But it's just talking a yeah. global scale. Um, how does selection happen for teams? You know, yeah. South Africa's we talked about that. How does it happen globally? How do they choose the best athletes to represent a country? Well. So the most well-known one is the U.S., where it's just a shootout over th over a week, and they have a U.S. trials where, as close as possible, they try and replicate the World Championship program, mm -hmm. and they say to those athletes, "You come top three, and you go. Mm -hmm. and if you don't come top three, then you." Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, and and that's led in the past to some big pro high-profile emissions. Yeah. I mean, Michael Johnson failed to qualify one year for the U.S. team. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, in in response to that, actually. The IAAF has now said that they give exemptions to athletes who are current world champs mm. and Diamond League champions. Mm. So that because they obviously they want the mm. best guys. Mm. Exactly. It's, not, it's not like cycling where they'll disqualify mm. Peter Sagan on the fourth mm. day of the race. You yeah. know, they want the guys there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so that, so the USA they basically say top three you're in mm. as long as you also achieve the qualifier. So okay. there have been cases of people who've come third at the US trials haven't achieved the qualifier and then mm. it goes to fourth. Okay. That happens. Okay. And and so, so it's a bit of BMT on the day, so they they yeah, can out those athletes that can perform. And that's how they defend it. They say they mm. say that if you can't mm. cut it at US trials, then what's going to happen on world yeah. stage? So yeah. and they've got a big. I mean, they've obviously got a much bigger pool of talent than. So you can afford to be yeah. inefficient when yeah. you've got yeah. like all those. Yeah. So so last year, for example, for instance, one of the big favourites in London in the hundred hurdles will be Kendra Harrison. Mm -hmm who missed the US trials, well she didn't miss the trials, she couldn't qualify mm -hmm. out of the US trials and then a week or two later she broke the world record. <laughs> so yeah. then we had a situation in Rio where the clear number mm -hmm. one wasn't mm -hmm. even in the event. Yeah. Yeah. She won the US trials this year so mm -hmm. she's fixed whatever, mm -hmm. I mean a hurdles is fragile, you, you clip a hurdle, you, you're yeah. as likely to break the world record as come eighth, you know, so, mm -hmm. so anyway, so it happens. Mm -hmm. And then other countries, Kenya, Kenya holds the trials. Yeah. But they're a little fast and loose with it. Uh, mm. They've had controversies also. Men's 800 in the trials, they didn't pick the guy who came third there. They, they chose instead to pick other guys. So they... they, they is, that, is that based on... I mean, they're basing it on just selectors making decisions about they, who they think will perform best, not just on the trials performance. Right, because, a combination. <laughs> because when you're top three in the Kenyan 800, you're a medal. Yes. Like, you're going to be a medalist. Yeah. Well, not you're going to... You're competing for gold. Yeah. So Which is why a lot of those athletes have went to Bahrain because they could guarantee well, a chance to win the champs and a bit of money. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. Kenya, Kenya's yeah. got guys who finished sixth in their trials who would be mm. middle, yeah. middle prospect, yeah. even lower. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Different. So the so the Kenyan and the Kenyan trials are, I suppose, loosely described as a guideline, <laughs> and then they and then they base it on mm. middle chance, mm. middle likelihoods. You know. Ethiopia seems to do the same. Mm. Uh, 
GB, they, they have a national championships from which they select as well. So mm -hmm. it, it, it varies around the world. For us, we, we have some, not, they're not unique, but they are challenging issues. Our, our track season starts in January. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, by the way, has implications for some of our medal chances because if you're a good, if you're performing well in the South African season, it means that you're at your relatively peak shape from February onwards. Mm. Time you get to August, you are yeah. wringing that physiology dry. So, yeah. yeah. So that's why I have doubts around Manyonga, you know, to be mm. explo in an explosive event like long jump, to mm. be jumping 860 from March all the way to August, that's. Mm. <laughs> It's always That's been a challenge. A it's lot. always been a challenge for the southern hemisphere countries, anyway. Yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Australians have the same mm. structure, you yeah. know, because you essentially you have to perform. It's a weird thing you have to perform in front of your local crowd mm. and also make sure that you're competitive globally. And yeah. a lot of the top athletes don't bother about the South African season once they get to a certain level. I mean, I'm sure Wade Finico wasn't peaking for the South African season. Yeah, so they have the luxury because they yeah. can they can do well in South Africa running yeah. at eighty five percent. Yeah. And a second and a half off his best, mm. he's still mm. dominant and dominant on our scene. So, mm. so he's happy. So mm. Manya's happy. Mm. Mm. Okay, Manyonga would be, but he hasn't. He hasn't been jumping at eighty-five. He's been jumping short of world record. Okay, but still, like right up there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just talk generally about the, the, the world championships. Obviously, the big story is going to be Bolts and his last sort of hurrah and the last swan song for him. Going to be a lot of hype around that. What other stories we've talked about? Wait for Nico. We've talked about Caster potentially doing a double gold. Yeah. What else is kind of brewing there? Is it is it is it is it about performance? We, I believe there's a big study going on there during the World Championships as well. Yeah. So there's a few there's a few good scientific things that will come out of London, um, and that's the focus of this podcast. Is like we don't we don't just want to talk about what happened in the men's 800 and why the guy got boxed in with 200 to go. And we, we will, <laughs> but I want to also touch on the science and so for instance there's a big biomechanics study mm -hmm. they've done these at every world champs for the last I don't know since, probably since 1987 mm -hmm. I think but this year is going to be the biggest one yet and they're going to study I think it's 17 events and they've got these high speed cameras plus camcorders around the track at various points and they're going to give us for instance in the sprints ground contact times stride length stride frequencies mm -hmm. uh, 10 meter splits and so forth. Mm -hmm. In the distance running, they'll give us foot strike angles and mm -hmm. so forth over the course of the men's Why 10. should we care about this? I mean, uh, it's great, but what what is it? I mean, well, can you I care because change it's, people? Because because it's literally what I do, right? So, <laughs> so, like, I love it. But, like, why? Okay, so why should, why a, should, I care why should a guy who's going to own park run on Saturday yeah. care? Well, so, so, okay, so let's pick one is the foot strike angle thing. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, there's been a big there's been a lot of conversation around should you forefoot strike yeah. is heel striking dangerous mm. the whole barefoot running thing fed into that because mm. part of the motivation to run barefoot is that you should change from a heel strike to a forefoot strike mm -hmm. the research we did in Cape Town with, with Nick Tam who's now got his PhD on this showed that only half of people did that anyway but anyway this is an aside only half went on the, yeah, yeah, the forefoot yeah, yeah, we took a bunch of guys who used to running in these, yeah. and we said, take them off and run. And this is our shoe wall, by the way, if anybody yeah. wants to know what this is. We Mike, have Mike keep Hord's, all our shoes. Mike Hord's shoes. Yes, we, we have a shoe a day, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so we say, okay, take the shoe off, and let's, let's stick with the biomechanics. And only half the people mm. make the shift. And even after eight weeks of training, like not many people have, not, not many more people have made that shift to forefoot. Yes. So, so the whole, how do you land, mm. and does how do you land impact injury risk and so that that, that matters and, and so can you change the way you land yeah yeah that, exactly yeah, that's that. that's yeah and how do you go about doing that so yeah. so that's the that's the broad context for it but the the reason it'll be interesting with the elites is because there's this perception perpetuated by the discussions around barefoot running and forefoot and so on that the elites land forefoot mm. and the park runner lands heel stroke and i think we'll find that that might not be true okay. although Running in track spikes is, mm. is, is a bit more difficult to yeah. heel strike. One of the things we're going to so, do this week is we're going to bring in our gear, so Ryan Scott, and to talk a little bit about the technology of shoes because mm. he deals a lot with the shoe. We can discuss yeah. how track shoes are so different in terms yeah. of the way they operate. And really yeah, what, what, what makes a good sprint spike? That's yeah. stiffness, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. So that'll be, mm. and then we can spin that off to like the, the London track is fast. Okay. For the same reason that a track fast track spike is fast because it's stiff and hard. All right, so to, just and so it loses. Explain what a good fast track is. What what is the if it's fast, what does it mean? It's uh, well, it's slightly downhill. 
Yeah. How do they make a track fast? You make it harder. Like okay. you, you make it a golf ball instead of a squash ball. Uh-huh. You can imagine, if I'm going to pelt you from 10 yards with a ball, you'd mm-hmm. rather have a squash ball than a golf ball. Yes. Because when you strike on a hard surface, a hard compacted surface, there's less energy lost on that yeah. impact. And sprinting especially is all about losing energy on impact. That's okay. You know, so a sprinter wants to be in contact with the ground for as short as possible, mm. but they want to generate as much force as possible. Mm. And energy dissipation, which is to say losing energy, mm-hmm. is very costly to sprinters. So the actual surface, the tartan, yeah, yeah, so is it different? I mean, a tartan is actually just very small pieces of plastic, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of yeah, plastic. Like it's a rubbery yeah. type. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not an engineer, I'm going to butcher yeah. this one. But yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, uh, the principle is make it hard, make it mm. compressed. compressed and, and they've done that now at major championships since probably Atlanta. Mm. And the distance mm. runners, Gabriel Selassie used to complain because mm. he said that these tracks are made for world records mm. in the 100, 200, 400. Mm. And then we got around 25 laps on this in spikes and we're yeah. going to hurt ourselves. And he used so to the actual impact injury of a guy running a 10,000 meters, which yeah. actually is an effect for those guys. Yeah, and if you've ever run for a while and fatigue yourself, Mm. and then you shift to concrete Mm. compared to even tarmac and then grass, you can notice the difference on what it does to the joints. And so that that was his argument. Mm. I I don't remember other guys complaining, but he he had Mm. that. that So would you expect to see some more records? No. No. No, What's the most, if there is one, where would we see it? Women's hammer throw. (laughs) (laughs) Anything more interesting? (laughs) In the interest of disclosure, between the two of us, we know very little about Especially the, throwing, especially the throwing events, like high jump and long jump, maybe a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna read up about it. We, we'll have to. But there's a Vlodarchik is a, is the is the woman broke the world record in Rio mm-hmm. in the hammer, and just a week ago was 11 centimeters short of it. Okay. And so she's she's most likely to get that world so record. So we're gonna watch out for the women's hammer throw. We are gonna set our yeah. clocks to. Is watch she Belarusian? I think she's Polish. Are yeah. they Polish or Belarusian? Yeah, the it's men's, the men's guys are also Polish. It's obviously okay. the national sport. Yeah. 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 Um, men's 400 went in Rio. That was Wade. Yeah. People could say it could go, go again. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen anything in the build up to the World Champs mm. to suggest that he can go that fast. So here's a question for you. There was a, there's been a lot of talk um, over the years of athletics that I've covered where guys like Wade, who are so dominant in a particular mm. event, they don't go for world records at World Championships or Olympic Games because there's no money incentive. So if you know you're going to win, you hold back over the last 10 meters yeah. so that you can do it at the Velt Plus or one of those events that they have in Europe where you can get paid big incentives. Is that is that a fair summation of professional running? I mean, if Wade for Niekirk's looking around, he's got you know five meters on his nearest competitor and he's literally within a with with, with a chance of getting the break with record. I would I would do that. I would say all right, I've won this. I don't need to break the world record. I'd rather do that at the Valve class yeah. and earn some money. Probably, but I don't know if he's thinking in that moment. Yeah. I could get the world record, but I'm going to not do it. I yeah. think he's thinking I'm winning. Yeah. And that's what I need to but do. We've seen Bolt do that in the 100 when he was winning and he's kind of. Yeah, but Bolt, Bolt wasn't thinking about his ba- bank balance in okay. that moment. He was just thinking, wow, <laughs> look at me. Yeah. My shoelace is undone. Yeah. I'm going to celebrate 10 meters yeah. from the line. Like, yeah. yeah. Because he was just. So I think things the same. I, mm. I think the athlete gets into the blocks and says, right, I'm going to go as fast as possible today. And mm. like, I'm going to go for, mm. maybe Wade's thinking, I'm going to go for the world record. Mm. But, but in, the, in, the, in the worlds of the Olympics, I think he's thinking, I'm going to win. Okay. Yeah. And so maybe that yeah. slight difference of... Mm. So it's, but I agree with you that if Wade's going to do it, he needs to be, with 70 meters to go, he needs someone there. Mm. You know, he had that in London. Mm. Plus, he was scared. He was running scared because he was in lane eight, mm. and he didn't know where they were until the yeah. last hundred meters. So, yeah. so I think that actually helped him. Mm. People made a, a lot of the fact that this un- unique world record from lane eight. But that's yeah, I don't think he's basically it's running. A, in theory, he's running a time trial against himself in that situation. Yeah, yeah. So the the self control. They say is, but then there's yeah. less of a bend. Well, yes. Is that a factor? I mean, he's he's, that, he's going to the a corner. It's certainly a, f- a negative factor if you're in one. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I think from lane eight, the biggest issue is that you have no ability to gauge where mm. you are. Yeah. So the, the, the mental self-control mm. to manage an effort over 400 from mm. eight, is, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But then again, maybe that maybe there was no control. Maybe that's just like a way of going like run for your life. <laughs> like, and then he got to 100 meters to go, and, and and he was like, okay, there's a couple of people there. So now it's like, this is the Olympics. This is my shot. I'm just going to go yeah. ahead, and the results, the world record. I don't see it happening in London. I, yeah. No one's going to be close enough. First yeah. of all, it's and a pity because that. I mean, you, uh, anybody that watched that Rio final in that last 20 or 30 meters, watching him stride away from the rest of them, and everybody else was tying up and fatiguing, yeah, yeah. he seemed to accelerate, and it really well, he was, wasn't. He wasn't, and I'm yeah. sure in scientific and, and, ways. And when we, and when, we yeah, yeah. when we talk about the sprint events, the 400, even up to the eight, the, the pacing stuff for me mm. is really interesting, and. I've got Wade splits, and you see how he got slower and slower and slower in that yeah. race. But everyone else, Merritt and James, just absolutely imploded. Which happens, which happens in the 400. Yeah, 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 everyone slows down. So no. the last 100 is the slowest? Yes. Almost every time? Mm. Nobody ever does a negative split? Nobody. Uh, no, unless, you, unless you jog the first 200, uh, uh, but then you're running a bad race. Yes. So okay. if you're running a, an authentic 400, you're slowing down. Okay. And Wade, off historic 200 meters, because no one had ever gotten to 200 that mm. quickly. Mm. Even his two to three was quick. He mm. slowed down less, you know. So yeah. that was, so it looked spectacular, but yeah. it was really, it would be, it would be like my nerd, the, the, the sports science nerd in me thinks one day we'll have little digital speedometers on top of each guy's head, you know, mm. showing you. Like they had at the tour, we had like live GPS. Yeah, absolutely. That would be cool. Because then you'd have seen like, yeah. Merit, these guys are slowing down 30, 29, 28, and he's yeah. holding 31, yeah. 30. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. would have been the difference. So, yeah. but no, I don't think I don't think a world record. Women's steeplechase, that's a hell of a race. Um, yeah. Last and that's year, a fairly recent event. It's only been going for sort of. Yeah, years, and it was it? it was lame for a while. Mm. Mm. Like no offense to the steeplechase, but it was <laughs> it was weak yeah. because it was new, and it, and I think it took mm. a while to to attract a better caliber athlete. Yeah. But but then last year you had. Uh, Jebet, who's a Kenyan running for Bahrain, and she was just every race like mm. going for world records. Mm. And this year she's not even top three. Mm. And so I must admit, I, there's, there's something inside of me that when I see the Kenyans running for Bahrain, that kind of oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, Whether it's Qatar, I understand why they're doing it because there's, there's good money involved. Yeah, and that's sure, but, oh, it's, it's, it, yeah, it that's, a bit, that's an it? issue that'll come up. The IWF haven't got that right because mm. you've got. There, there must be half a dozen Ethiopians running for the Netherlands or Sweden yeah. or whatever, yeah. for Turkey. There's mm. Kenyans running in Bahrain, Qatar, mm. Turkey. It's it's a mess. I mean, mm. there are some running in the USA who are naturalized because they've been there for 20 years. Mm. Mm. And that I've got no issue with that. Yeah. But yeah. these ones, I mean, some of these people, they don't even live in the country. Mm. Mm. They haven't been there for three weeks a year. Yeah. yeah. They just go there to collect their... I don't know, paycheck and mm. passport, and mm. off they go back to Kenya. So as we are in a world of professionals, I mean, it's the same thing with soccer teams and 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 rugby teams yeah, and cycling then, teams. And you know, but the UAE just, cycling team isn't made up of people from the UAE. It's made up of people like Louis Mankies and Ben Swift and the team. Sure, so. but then we should get rid of world champs and we should just call yeah. it the Premier League or something. And there's already yeah. a diamond league for that. So yeah. I I would like them to have like a five year residency rule. Mm. Or, or some something a little mm. bit stricter, or, or exclusion from major championships for eight mm. years, or something. I don't Can know. they hold a conversation on Bahrainian? Yeah, 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 like <laughs> a, a like the citizenship <laughs> test, but like they do in the oh, US yes, and yeah, England, yeah, but absolutely. but for so that 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 that'll be a story. I mean, that's always a story of European mm. champs, because mm. the Euro European championships, mm. especially the distance events, are absolutely overrun by Moroccan, Ethiopian, and Kenyan yeah. athletes running for Holland. Running for yeah, Holland and Spain and yeah, whatever, yeah. and then the Europeans are saying, "But like, come on, I'm I'm yeah. the I'm the best European, but yeah. I'm coming fifth. Yeah, like, it's yeah. a bit faster. Yeah. 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 So that'll be yeah. perhaps a, a story. Yeah. And then the other big one, and I hate to be the like bringer of doom and skepticism, but this is the D one. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, like, you cannot. And this is this is to journalists who are watching this. You cannot authentically write about track and field athletics without acknowledging doping. You can't do it. Explain it's, that. Well, I don't like to almost think about it because maybe there's an ignorance about that. It takes away if you think that it's happening. Yeah, of you course. Do it, I mean, you, you not? I mean, you can't think everybody's suspicious. You know, yeah, yeah. I guarantee you. Like, if if we had more, okay, I don't know how many questions and comments we're getting, but no, people I'm are going to see them at the moment. People are going to be saying, "Oh, leave our heroes alone." I got this on Twitter the other day. I posted some comment on the weekend about a story that we'll go into because it's got implications for doping. And people say, leave the heroes alone. And I, mm. I get that people want heroes. Right? But when, in, in 2001, if you'd brought up 
the possibility that Armstrong was doping like David Walsh did, mm -hmm. people were going to say to him, leave him alone, he's an inspiration. Well, fine, but he's also doping. <laughs> Like and it, yeah. David knew that at the time, and now we all do. Mm. And if you, and not, not David's not the only guy who knew. No, for sure. So on the weekend, the Daily Mail, because we're back in London, you know, it's going to be the fifth anniversary of the London Olympic Games. In London, 2012, there was a Super Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the fourth of August, 2012, or the fifth. I forget. Mo Farah, Jess Ennis, and Greg Rutherford on the Saturday night in London won won gold medals, mm. and that was now. Because they were the hosts, this was the big, this was Super Saturday, and they're gonna, they've decided to to reincarnate, as it were, Super Saturday now this weekend. Mm. Um, and those London 2012 games were hailed by various people, Sebastian Coe being one of them, as the cleanest games ever. Mm. Well, on Sunday, the Daily Mail looked. I mean, it's not a complicated analysis. They said, what percentage of the track and field athletes from 2012 either failed the test there or have since failed the test, and it's mm. one in seven. So 13% of those athletes at the cleanest games ever, thanks Seb, <laughs> failed drugs tests in the intervening four or five years. Now a lot of those were Russians because we know what happened with the Russian athletics mm. or sport afterwards. Are the Russians in the world champs? Or they no, still they, still, they still require an official exemption. So, so there's no Russian athletes at the world champs? Competing under a blank flag they are, but uh, not under the Russian flag. So uh, in the women's high jump, the, the overwhelming favourite is Maria, formerly Kachina, now Lassit Skaney. I, th I think I probably butchered that, sorry. But she's competing as a Russian, but under a, yeah. under a blank, basically a white flag. Okay. So there are some. And yeah. she could become the first gold medalist under that flag, I think. I, okay. I think. No one won it in, mm. in Rio. Anyway, point is, so you're looking at one in seven. There are studies on prevalence where they've gone to athletes at World Champs and they said, do you or have you ever doped anonymously? So they're basically asking you, the athletes, have you ever taken illegal drugs? Mm. And even though it's anonymous, you know that some people aren't going to confess. So whatever yeah. number you get is an underestimate, yeah. and you still get 30 to 40 percent confessions. So, yeah. so you're looking at you're looking at 50 percent of the athletes are doping. Now, that doesn't mean I just want to be clear on this because I know people are going to leave our heroes alone. And that doesn't mean that every single athlete's doping. Yeah. But if you if you can't at least acknowledge that, so for instance. I've, I've studied and, and with some colleagues we've written a dozen papers on why Kenyans are the best runners. Mm. So <laughs> I have a vested interest in Kenyans having some genetic advantage because yeah. it's my stated position. Yeah. But we cannot have a conversation about Kenyans winning medals mm. without acknowledging that Kenyan anti-doping is an oxymoron. Mm. It, it doesn't exist. Mm. Ethiopia, it doesn't exist. Mm. So those guys are disappearing into these rural areas and they are inaccessible to doping testers, anti-doping testers. So, yeah. so, you, so when, you, when you see a clean sweep of Kenyans at the a marathon, say over the, the, of all the medals in the marathon, you, you can't say what a glorious day for Kenya, blah, 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 and not mention, however, there, 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 is, this, there is this elephant in the room. It, it has to be there. And there are some athletes that I think are more glaringly obvious than others. But, yeah. and, and I mean, I'm, I'm fine saying it, but like, if Mo Farah wins a gold medal on, on Friday night, it's the first gold, it's the first track gold, certainly. With, with everything that's going on with his coach, Salazar, mm. and his other coach, Jama Aden, mm. who's under investigation in Spain, Salazar's under investigation in the USA, Farah disappears to Ethiopia for many years. It was leaked the other day that his, his blood passport was likely doping mm. uh, a couple of years ago. You can't celebrate Mo Farah's mm. 56th medal or whatever it is and not yeah. say, but serious questions remain around Mo Farah's credibility as a clean athlete because of very strong association with dope coaches, very strong uh, mm -hmm. evidence of, of dishonesty around his association. Mm -hmm. it, you have to tell that story. Yeah. It's just not yeah. possible to, you're delusional. It's, I guess it's a bit like the launches, you know, you, you, you do watch, you, I mean, I was one of those people who, during the Armstrong, Armstrong years, would think, well, until somebody is proven guilty, it's very hard to assume that they're they are, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess when you're watching an event like the World Championships, it is magnificent watching Kenyan athletes running the 3,000 meter steeplechase, admiring the, the their skill and ability and their yeah, incredible sure. athleticism. And, so yeah, yeah it, it's it's a it's it's a hard thing as a, as an athletics lover mm. to accept what you're saying. I'll be honest with you. Look, I, I, I even though I know it's real, my earliest memory, which I'm sure subconsciously somehow inspired me to study sports science, was mm. well, it's not my earliest memory. 
that I'd be, someone thinks something wrong with me if my earliest memory was when I was 11. But I was 11 years old and I remember watching South Africa's readmission in 1992 to the mm -hmm. Barcelona Olympics. Yeah. And I remember two races in particular. The one obvious one was Ilana Meyer mm -hmm. against Tulu in the 10. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that stood with me. And then the other one was the men's 10, which Alimo lost to Khalid Scar in, in an extremely controversial. There were disqualifications and reinstatements mm -hmm. and appeals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then ever since that, when I was 15, waking up at like 3 in the morning and watching the men's distance, mm. I, I loved watching the East African runners. Mm. But mm. you can't, yeah. you, you can't pretend like there's not a problem there, mm. you know? No. And, and, and one of the issues is, and I know that over 10 days we will have to talk about doping again. Mm. One of the problems is, is people say we need proof. Mm. Anti-doping is completely incapable of providing the proof that people need. Because yeah. what people need is a positive test. But, again, I said earlier, 40% of athletes confess to doping. Mm. At the time of the event, only 1% to 2% mm. fail tests. Yeah. So, so you've got 40 out of 100 doping and 1 out of 100 failing, which means 39 in 100 mm. get away with it. The, the, the testing is... But they also have the potential of not getting away with it at the end of the day. And you can't potential. control everybody, but you, you want to try and make it as Yeah, you want to disincentivize yeah. it, right? Yeah. But we know now that the hope that you would take an athlete's blood or get their urine sample in London at the World Champs mm. and put it under, well, I was going to say put it under a microscope. It's a bit more complicated than that. Mm. Put it through some lab tests mm. and up pops a testosterone or EPO. Mm. Hopelessly naive. Mm. Because that's not how doping is done, right? Yeah. So the standard of proof that anti-doping was designed to find mm. is unrealistically high. Mm. We, we were basically asking for a, sm a video of a guy committing a crime with a smoking gun in his hand. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. Yeah. Now, in, 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 the, in the criminal justice system, something like a law and order ad, mm. uh, that's not the level of proof that's needed. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they do detective work and they will mm. pull together, where were you? They'll ask for alibis, they'll look yeah. for associations, yeah, yeah. they'll find indirect proof, they'll follow the money. Yeah. That's where anti-doping needs to go to mm. find proof. And in my opinion, sitting here, there is enough proof around certain athletes that mm. if, if this were to court a law and mm. I was a juror or a judge, mm. I'd find you guilty. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is. So. Plus, I know we're running out of time, uh, yeah. but we've got some interesting week ahead of us. Um, do we have any questions? I haven't been able to access the questions at the moment. We are running out of time, so okay. what we'll do is, we'll, on Friday, what we'll do is we'll make sure that we get to as many questions as possible. Um, don't forget, every single day from Friday, we're even going to do it on the weekend. That's how much we love this thing. We're going to be doing it right. on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, we're going to be doing a live uh, podcast. We didn't know how long it's going to be. It depends on what the stories are. If you want to follow Ross, he's on scienceofsport.com. A fascinating website. I'm trying to see. Well, if you, if <laughs> sorry. Some, the website's sportsscientist.com. Sportscientist, sorry. Yeah, sorry. science but of sport the, taken. <laughs> but, the tw but the Twitter handle it's is... Science of Sport, sport yeah. Science of Sport is the Twitter yeah. handle. Yeah. And what is the website address again? Sportscientists.com. Dot com. So two S's in the middle. Dot com, yeah, yeah. So it gives you a fantastic, uh, yeah. and, I, and I tell you, I'm warning you, don't go onto the site if it's during the day of work, because you'll read a story, and then you read another story, and you read another story. I find <laughs> it fascinating. So if you want to have a look at some real insights, so Ross has sure. got that. We look forward to hosting you from Friday for the entire duration of the World Championships, giving as much insight as we can. Please, once we get our systems up and running, we'll be able to answer some of the questions that you posted today. Um, and uh, please interact with us. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know about what you'd like to talk about, and we'll be able to hopefully provide all the answers. Ross, thank you very much. We'll cool. see you on Friday very for good. a whole 10 days of athletics and all the drama that goes with it. Cannot wait. Thanks. Cheers for now.